Today, I'm excited to test a brand new lithium iron phosphate battery on the channel. This is Redodo's new 12 volt, 165 amp hour smart battery. Now what's really cool is that if you compare this to their previous 100 amp hour batteries, you can see they're the same exact size. They both use a group 31 battery case. However, they packed larger cells and a larger BMS into the new smart battery. Now let's quickly dive into the battery specifications, starting with the nominal voltage, which is 12.8 volts. It has a rated capacity of 165 amp hours and a rated energy of 2112 watt hours. And it has a maximum continuous charge and discharge current of 165 amps and a maximum power output of 2112 watts, which means this is perfect for a 2000 watt inverter. So if you need to power a 2000 watt inverter, Instead of having to have two 100 amp hour batteries connected together, you can run that inverter with this single battery. Now for the remainder of the video, we'll be doing extensive testing on the battery to see how it performs, and then we'll do a teardown to check the build quality. Let's jump into it. Now first, I completed a capacity test on the battery with my electronic load. I had it set to a 0.2C rate, or 33 amps, and by the time the battery had shut off, I pulled a total of 168.06 amp hours or 2159 watt hours. So we did pull over the full rated capacity of the battery. Now I also tracked the voltage curve during this test just to make sure there wasn't any sudden voltage drops. And you can see that the voltage curve is very flat throughout the entire test. Now moving on to the next test, can the Rudoto 165 handle the maximum continuous output? Now in order to test that out, I'm gonna use my SunGold Power 4000 watt low frequency inverter. This thing is a beast. We're gonna be setting up a 2100 watt load or right around 165 amps. We're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes to see if the battery can run that without an issue. So I've just started the test. I've gotten the load right around 167 amps. So we're right at the limit of the BMS. So I'm gonna start this timer. We're gonna let it go for 15 minutes and see if it can handle it. So the battery has been running the load for over 16 minutes now. We're still pulling 167 amps. Next, I wanna check with my thermal camera to see what the temperature is. Now, I will say I am using one aught cable here and then two aught cable here. So 170 amps is basically the upper limit. So these are going to be pretty warm. Now measuring with my thermal camera, I'm showing 141 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm interested to see what conductors they have on the inside. So we'll find that out when we do a teardown, but this is partially my fault because I am using one aught cable and that is definitely gonna get warm when you're pushing 170 amps. Now moving on to the next test, I wanna see how many amps the BMS can handle before it shuts off. In order to test that, I'll be using my 1000 amp carbon pile load tester. So for the first test, I wanna go slightly higher than the 165 amp rating. So let's hold a little over 200 amps and see how long the BMS will go. So we'll start the stopwatch and go up to 200 amps, a little bit higher. So I'm pulling a little over 200 amps and I'm hoping that the BMS is going to shut off at a certain point. So let's see. Okay, perfect. So a little bit over 10 seconds and the BMS shut off the battery. Now I wanted to see if the battery would turn itself back on automatically and after about 30 seconds, it does. So if you pull a little bit over the BMS limit, the battery will turn itself back on after about 30 seconds. Now in the owner's manual, it states that this can handle 825 amps for less than one second. Now that's a crazy amount of power. So we'll see if it can do it. Now I really hope the BMS turns off because this is kind of like a short circuit, pulling over 800 amps. Well, let's see. Okay, perfect. It seems that it got up almost to 850 amps, but the BMS did turn off. Now I waited for about three and a half minutes to see if the battery would turn itself back on and it did not. So if you pull that many amps, the battery stays in kind of a hibernation mode until you connect up a battery charger to wake it up or to turn it back on. Now this battery is also advertised to have low temperature charging protection. So in order to test that out, I put it in my Anchor Everfrost fridge for over 24 hours. So if we look in here, the temperature is exactly at freezing. So let's take it out and see if it charges. 
So with the battery removed from the fridge, I've connected up my adjustable power supply and you can see that it's not charging. And I basically have this turned all the way up. Now I've opened up the smart app and you can see there's an alarm here. If I click on that, it shows low temperature charging protection is enabled. Now we just wanted to make sure that as the battery warmed up, it would start charging again. So it's been about an hour and a half and the adjustable power supply is now charging the battery. Now this battery does have Bluetooth connectivity. That's why they call it a smart battery. So we do have it connected to the smart app. I'll select the battery. Now once you're into the battery menu or the screen for the battery, you can see the state of charge at the top. You can see the status of the battery. It's in standby right now. And then you can get a breakdown of the power and wattage, the current, the voltage, and the capacity of the battery. Now the battery is fully charged. Now right below that, you have the ability to see if the cells are balanced what type of condition they're in, and then you can see any errors that the BMS may be putting out. So if you have a low temperature charging protection warning, it's gonna show under this screen. You can also look at the battery info. For example, you can change the device name, you can see the serial number, and then right below that, you have the temperature of the battery, the cycle life, and the firmware version. Now what's interesting is I've cycled this battery multiple times, but I think the cycle life only counts if it's gone all the way down to 0% and all the way up to 100% state of charge. So after all those tests, this battery does appear to be a high quality battery and it performs just as advertised. But what about the build quality on the inside? The only way to find that out is to tear down the battery. So let's get started. Wow, guys, I finally got the battery out of the case. Typically, I don't have to completely destroy it and cut it open. But because of that adhesive strip in the bottom, I could not get it out. So I had to cut it open to get leverage and the case is completely ruined, but let's go check out the battery. So this is how the battery was sitting inside the case. So you have the lid on like this and then uh, the BMS is here on the side. I did remove um, these foam pads that were on the top. So that was kind of giving it pressure between the lid and the bottom of the case. Now I flipped the battery over so you can see the BMS. It does appear to be their brand of BMS or at least it has their sticker on it. And here's the model number. It is Bluetooth capable. It's rated at 165 amps charge and discharge. It did uh, successfully pull that amount of power. Now as for the conductors, I had to cut this open, this insulation that was on these. Um, it's using two seven gauge wires. Um, that would probably suggest why we had so much heat buildup because this is just a little underrated in my opinion for 165 amps continuous. Um, for the negative conductors, they're using four um, eight gauge wires. Now I've rotated the battery so we can look at the cable management and see how everything's assembled. For the cable management, we do have zip ties holding all the cables in the important places. We also have glue on the BMS to hold the balance leads and the temperature sensors. And for the main battery terminals, the lugs are installed properly. They're up against the main terminal. And then the balance lead is on the outside of that, which is exactly what you want to see. And these are both uh, tight and glued down. As for the individual uh, balance leads, it does appear that they are glued and screwed down as well. Now for the actual battery cells, they are compressed with these compression straps on uh, both sides. So they wrap this side and then they wrap around this side. That's definitely gonna give the cells a bit of pressure. And then we do have um, these fiber boards in between the cells for spacing. Now I just removed the BMS so that we could see the QR codes for each of the cells. Now these cells do appear to be new. Um, there's no signs of usage and each of the QR codes are intact and they're not damaged. Now I did scan one of these. I'll put that information up on the screen. Unfortunately, the manufacturer is unknown, but it does have a manufacture date of August 1st, 2024. So these cells are fairly new. I was assembling the battery back together and I noticed one other detail. If you look at the bottom here, there is actually a metal plate and they have the same metal plate on the top. So it kind of gives it reinforcement on the bottom and top of the battery and a little extra protection. So I just finished putting the battery back inside the case. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with this thing now that the case is destroyed. Maybe I can find a case online to put it in, but it's kind of a bummer that uh, the disassembly process, uh, the teardown process didn't go that smoothly. Now, what about pricing for the battery? If you look on Redoto's website, it's priced at $350, and this has a capacity of 2,112 watt hours, so that's about 16 cents per watt hour. Now there are cheaper batteries out there, 
but they don't have Bluetooth connectivity. So if you are looking for Bluetooth connectivity, I do feel like that's a pretty decent price for the battery. Now I also saw a limited time discount on Amazon where the battery is priced at $310. So you do save a little bit of money. I'm just not sure how long that sale will be active. Now a special thanks to Redodo for sending out this battery for testing so you guys can see how it performed. And if you are interested in picking up this battery, I will have the link to it down in the video description so you guys can check it out. Now let me know what you think about this battery. I really think that it's awesome. They can fit 165 amp hours in the same case that a lot of brands use for their 100 amp hour batteries. And the fact that it does have a larger BMS and smart app connectivity is pretty sweet. Let me know what you think about the battery. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you can check out if you are interested in this type of content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.